Hi everybody, I wanted to talk with you today about dementia. I'm upstairs, I have not been up here in a while to do a video, but I wanted to be able to read exactly what some definitions were, and um, this is just the easiest way. My computer is right in front of me. Dementia is very um, personal to me because I am my mother's caregiver. I've been her caregiver for a long time. She she was diagnosed around seven or eight years ago with dementia, and then and then she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and then she was eventually diagnosed with vascular dementia after the MRI, the brain MRI. Um, a lot of people always say, what's the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? And I, I wanted to explain to hopefully make it a little bit easier to know, to understand that dementia is the top of it. It's, it's uh, like the umbrella and underneath are all the different types of dementia. Kind of like cancer is here and the different types of cancer are underneath. So you have lung cancer underneath and you've got liver cancer and pancreas and so forth. So let's go right into the different types. And then I wanted to go into some extremely particular and unusual symptoms because I see those unusual things every day. Everybody has different symptoms. Not all of them are the same. Uh, the first one I want to talk about real quick here, I'm just going to go over them and maybe I'll put them up on a, on a script or a, a text, I mean, and, and while I'm explaining it, I'll have it up for you to read somewhere up here or next to me. So Lewy body dementia. Um, currently, 1.3 million Americans have Lewy body and it, it most usually comes, uh, correlates with Parkinson's disease, but not always. Frontotemporal dementia is what Bruce Willis has been diagnosed with, and that affects mainly the communication and speak, speaking, communication, um, expression. My mother has none of that. She can communicate perfectly. So I'll get to her specific symptoms in just a moment. The next one is vascular dementia, which really has to do with a lack of proper oxygen to the brain. You can get that due to a stroke, high blood pressure, out of control blood pressure, narrowing of vessels due to different reasons. One of them may be high cholesterol and um, diabetes. So I'll, I'll also explain in a moment too about how to reduce the risk of dementia and what they're saying to do now. And the vascular dementia, if it has to do with high cholesterol, high blood pressure, that's one thing you want to do, not smoke to keep your diabetes under control and take your uh, blood pressure medication properly and cholesterol medication properly so that you can um, keep those blood vessels healthy. Uh, the next type under dementia is Alzheimer's that I have listed here. Doesn't There's no particular order here. Um, it is the most common though, 5 million Americans and in the UK 850,000 people is the last current count have Alzheimer's. The limbic predominant age-related or TDP43 encephalopathy is a buildup of proteins. Usually this happens with older adults around 80 years old and older. That isn't, that none of these are, you know, absolutely, uh, but this is just giving you general, generally, like generally Lewy body dementia has to do with Parkinson's, but not always. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE. You hear about CTE when it comes to uh, football players or chronic head injury sports related uh, athletes. And um, that comes from repetitive head injuries. Because the bottom line really is, with dementia, is that it is um, a damage to the brain, me, a damage to the brain cells. How do you get the damage to the brain and the brain cells from these particular things, one of them being repetitive head injuries? Um, Parkinson's disease, dementia. Okay, then the one that we know about from mad cow disease um, is the crutchfeld Jacob disease can be from mad cow or from abnormal prion proteins. I don't know much about that other than hearing about it with mad cow and it being like, oh, that is frightening. Uh, it's frightening for animals. It's terrible for humans. All of this is terrible. Huntington's disease. Okay, you can get dementia from Huntington's disease and you've probably heard a lot about that or you know somebody who's had it. I, I certainly have known people who've had that. It is inherited. Uh, the neurons die. Mixed dementia, more than one type of dementia, and then you alcohol-related dementia. Um, I've seen quite a bit of that in my nursing career. All right, so let's go to um, some changes that happen to the person when they have dementia. We all hear about memory decline. That is a given. Uh, repeating, and we're not talking about, especially as it progresses along, we're not talking about, you know, my mom told me the same story twice. It's my mom told me the same story um, 15 times in an hour, or every minute the same story came out 
for the entire day. Chronic repetition, it's, it's, it's just, it is uh, intense and, and it takes a lot of patience. Um, as soon as the question or the comment comes out and it gets answered or discussed, it starts over again. And then you do this whole repetitive cycle for hours. You, you can try to break that and, and it's, you can break that particular comment, but then the next comment might come up. So then that will happen and in the next minute, here it comes again, in the next minute, here it comes again. That's why what's really sad about people with dementia is if something terrible or unfortunate has happened, like if, a, if a, an Alzheimer's patient's spouse passes away or friend passes away or some, something has happened, they, ha they relive it. They relive it 10 times that day, four times that hour. They are feeling and expressing the same response repetitively over and over and over again. Um, so some other things that are pretty typical is that a person with dementia has changes in behavior, has maybe some impulsivity or some blurting out of words or expressions that we normally would find inappropriate. A fixation on saying things related to alcohol or related to sex or related to um, something really inappropriate. And then, and that happens, That that's a, something I see all the time. Um, malnutrition, dehydration, hypothermia. I wanted to go over those things. And not caring about other people's feelings. That's not the norm for most people and it's certainly not the norm of maybe what that uh, patient or person used to be like. But now that person has a lack of caring or concern for things that you would think would uh, cause them to be concerned about. Um, if I express something that person has said to me that was really hurtful, the reaction I might get is, well, too bad. Go, oh, there's the door. That's the kind of thing I hear instead of, you know, maybe the typical might be, oh, I didn't know. What, what did I say that bothered you? Or I didn't mean to say that, I'm really sorry. That has stopped. Hallucinations, delusions, and paranoia, that happens. Unable to follow a recipe, unable to follow directions of any kind, written or verbal. Uh, lack of bowel and bladder control. But you know, some of these things are, oh, poor judgment, if I didn't already say that. Poor judgment and reasoning skills. Um, often people call that um, higher functioning, executive functioning skills. Um, if I walk out in the middle of the street, I might get hit by a car, but those executive functioning skills or uh, judgment type of skills are gone in people with, or can be, again, this isn't everybody's symptom, but it, it, that can be um, something that someone with dementia experiences. And that's where the safety issue comes in. There are a lot of these things that I mentioned. Somebody who's delusional, that's not safe to be living alone. It's somebody who's got really poor judgment or reasoning skills, walking outside barefoot in the snow. Um, opening the door at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., having zero recollection of doing it or why that person is doing it, but that's a real safety concern. Um, I say amnesia. So the last time my mom uh, was brought up to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle where they have a wellness brain clinic, I said to him, what is going on with this chronic amnesia? My mom's particular unusual but yet can happen symptoms. Um, I wanted to go over because uh, I wondered too for a long time, like I was mentioning about the amnesia, I had to pause because I felt like I was gonna sneeze. So um, a lot of people when they do YouTube, they, they just click go live and they, they go live because they can't stand to edit it. Because when you edit it and you're a tinkerer like me, you are gonna edit out every sneeze, every this, every you know what's happening, turning of head, because I feel like it's distracting or annoying, but I probably should just let it all go. Um, and that's why they do it live, so they cannot ever touch it or edit it. All right, so the amnesia. I, I said to him, he's a neuropsychiatrist. I said, why is she and many others, why are they living in amnesia? This is horrible. It's like 24-7 it's like amnesia. You're speaking to them. They're having a normal conversation, or in my mother's case, absolutely wonderful, amazing communication, uh, articulate um, expressive, can count backwards by seven uh, from a hundred, just like that, uh, can still play cards. So numbers are still really good. Communication is really good. But yet living in amnesia, meaning uh, I, I, don't, I don't say this anymore, but you know, like I just explained 
this particular thing, but one second, five seconds later, it's gone. And you learn as the years go on with this. Like I used to be, you know, do something like, here's a really important piece, here's that document, mom, take that and go put it, you know, someplace where it's really important for you. And then you turn around and this, it's gone. That document is absolutely off, gone in midair. That, that happens now. Anything important has cannot be left with that person. Um, that's how it is with food. You order food, certain foods in the fridge, you come back the next day, where'd all that food go? Where did the bandages go and scissors that I brought? Or where did the batteries go that I brought? I was going to do this and this and that. I don't know. I don't know. They don't know. But the stuff is absolutely gone. Sometimes in the garbage can, sometimes giving it away to the neighbors. Uh, who knows to this day? Who knows? You know, where did those sweatpants go? I bought 10 pairs of sweatpants for you for Christmas. Where, where are all the sweatpants? Gone. So when I said why the amnesia 24-7, he said... That's just part of the disease process. That was the answer I got. Then after, and I, I guess that is the answer, but sometimes I just, like, why? Why is this happening? But here's the other big question I asked him. How is it that a person with dementia can be sitting next to me at, on Christmas and in the kitchen with me on Christmas and spend all of Christmas with me and maybe grandchildren and have a beautiful conversation, but then the minute you get in the car to go home, that entire memory, that entire two hours, that entire participation in watching a sports event or participating in playing and learning chess or, you know, just having a good time is completely gone. And by the time the evening rolls around, that person feels left out or could, just giving you an example of my situation, because I wasn't invited for Christmas. I wasn't invited for Thanksgiving. I spent it completely alone. That is really baffling to me. I, I just find that it's hard to understand. It's hard to understand how I can spend the day doing something with my mother, or I'm there five days a week, but every day that I'm with her, she doesn't remember that I'm there with her. And of course she doesn't recall any conversations, but you know, last weekend she had three of her grandchildren over and these particular three, two live out of state. Uh, she doesn't see them, but the, uh, they spent the day with her and had lunch with her and um, it was gone. There's, there's, I sure missed my grandchildren, even though they were just here. Um, but I asked the doctor about that. Why, how does this happen? Oh, it's complex. It has to do with tangles and this and that and the other, but that's a theory. Um, is it really that? Is it now that the MRI is done, is it because of the vascular dementia diagnosis? So he diagnosed her with vascular dementia and Alzheimer's. Now that's not surprising. The other thing he talked about was Lewy body. Although when I read about it, that doesn't really fit for her. And you can't with, uh, with definitive answers say yes, Louis body until there's an autopsy, but that was one of his things he felt. Um, she doesn't drink alcohol, she doesn't smoke, she doesn't have diabetes. Why is it that people with dementia often are malnourished and dehydrated? Uh, part of it is they forget that they have ate or drank anything. In their mind, um, they, they think they just ate. They, they remember making pot roast, it might've been 15 years ago, but but in that person's mind, they just made it. I just had KFC. I just ate. I'm so full. So the Im the feeling of, um, I was going to say empty stomach, the feeling of hunger is gone. The feeling of thirst is gone. Um, that is what she experiences. So she is malnourished. She has, yes, dropped a lot of weight, but you can be of, of normal weight and still be malnourished because um, there's no protein. There's no uh, vitamins. Um, she now is on prescription vitamin D and she was on injections of, of B12. Now we take oral B12 because it was really difficult for me to um, give her shots every week. My mom, with any, any sensation of pain or perceived pain, diagnosis is anticipatory pain. A nursing diagnosis is anticipatory grief. You know, so my mom has for darn sure anticipatory pain. Uh, I'm feeling pain on a scale of 10 over 10, even though someone hasn't touched me, but I'm anticipating it's going to hurt. So screaming occurs, uh, clinching, flinching, crying out. That is, man, look out if you're ever in the hospital with someone with dementia, because you're going to think that they have extreme un- 
treated pain, but it's really not necessarily that. They could, but it's not always necessarily that. So it was hard for me to keep giving her shots when she screamed out and I was I felt so bad. Um, so malnourishment. Um, I think I'm eating. I don't have an appetite. I'm not hungry. I thought I just ate. Uh, dehydration, oh my gosh, never drink, never, never feels that feeling of thirst. I don't really like water anyway. Um, if I didn't, the only time water is, is, is being consumed is when I say, drink this water, please. Take another sip of water, please. Please take a bite of food. Have another bite of food. So that's how it is. That's how it is every day. Hypothermia. This is really interesting. Um, and even her primary internal medicine PCM said, primary care manager said, um, I admit a lot of patients to the hospital because of hypothermia. And um, yes, that uh, malnutrition and dehydration are um, avoidable things, but they are not avoidable unless they have a caregiver and somebody is telling them to do these things every single day, all day. Um, hypothermia occurs because the person with dementia often does not feel cold or doesn't remember where the blankets are or doesn't know how to dress for the weather. If I didn't help my mother, she dresses in the winter with um, summer clothes, maybe a t-shirt, pants, no socks, no jacket, uh, no gloves. It's, if it's snowing out, um, this walking out barefoot has occurred. Um, and also getting overheated. So let's talk about that for a second too. How much do you wanna argue with your loved one when it's at the end of their life possibly? Um, they're in their 70s, 80s, or 90s, and you're saying, put the other shirt on, mom. Dad, you have to have a sweat. You have to put your sweatshirt on. I'm gonna help you put your sweatshirt on. You gotta put a jacket on, it's snowing out. How much arguing are you going to do? Because most of them, who have dementia, most of those people are going to say, okay, not all of them. So being obstinate, argumentative um, is uh, the norm in my situation. Which things are you gonna fight about? Are you gonna fight about the water, the food, or the clothing? Um, this is difficult. We can't judge caregivers. You can't judge me because you don't know what you would be doing if you had five years of arguments. You don't know which thing you would force or give up on. Uh, one time, my other sister and I said, uh, I think it was Mother's Day last year. Well, we're not taking you unless you use your walker. You have to use your walker. Inability to walk, uh, weakness, all this is a given. Uh, well, then I'm not going. So she took her walker and she threw it. At that point, would you just say, all right, fine, just use your cane? Or would you say, well, then we're going and you're not? I mean, it's really difficult. You can't, you can't judge. You just don't know what you would do. Um, do you want those memories? Because the memories are not for them. It's, uh, there's no easy answer to any of this. Now, if you go to a neuropsychiatrist, a dementia um, social worker, and you ask these questions, what's the best way to do this? What's the best way to do that? They are not going to say, all right, this is how you get them to change their clothes for winter. Here's what works. You could look at some things and you can, uh, I'm gonna list below some really great YouTube videos. Like when, when the time came, for example, I don't wanna take a shower anymore. I never thought I would get to that. I don't wanna take a shower. Uh, I'm too weak to take a shower. Don't force me. Do I really have now? Do I have to use soap? Do I really have to wash my hair? Every step of the way is difficult. I'm talking about being on a shower chair. I'm not talking about having your loved ones step into the shower because those days are long gone. Um, how much of that are you going to argue about? But uh, Tipa Snow is an occupational therapist that's really well known on YouTube and she gives uh, all kinds of lectures information. She's written so many things about dementia as a dementia caregiver. And uh, I watched her videos about how to get a loved one into the bathroom, into the shower, into a tub. None of that worked. Let's make it into a spa. Does your mom like candles? Light a candle. Get your mom over there into the bathroom where she likes the candles and the scent of bubble bath or the smell of a new soap. That that doesn't work for everybody, but it's really a good idea for some that it would work for. A lot of these things that you're going to read about or that somebody suggests, because all your friends are going to suggest, they're going to be like, my uncle's grandfather had dementia and this is what they did and it worked. What do you mean your mom doesn't want to go into an adult family home? Make her, force her, put her in a wheelchair and drop her off, push her against her will, put her in the car and seatbelt her. Sometimes you just got to do those things. 
maybe I should do a whole video on why you can't kidnap your loved one and put them into a nursing home against their will, because it is kidnapping. Okay, so every state is different, but I'm gonna tell you in the state that I'm at, I already paid $350 an hour to talk to an elder care law attorney who said, if your mother is verbal and expressive and says, I do not want that surgery, I do not want to go into an adult family home, I do not want to eat, then you can't force them. I sure know that in the hospital. If the patient says, I don't want chemo, okay, I'm not talking about children who can live, and then, then it goes to the ethics committee. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if somebody who's 80 says, I don't want this. I want to die in my apartment. I don't want to be alone in an adult. I will die early if I'm, I'll kill myself if you make me go. Those are the kinds of things that I hear. Um, but I knew I couldn't force her, but other people felt like I could force her. I am her medical power of attorney, but you cannot force somebody against their will, nor can you trick them. So if somebody gives you advice and says, lie to them, trick them, kidnap them, that is not true. That is against the law, and that's not really fair to do to uh, somebody who's not well. Bring in the care to them. Bring caregivers, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and bring them in. Don't t force them against their will into situations that are going to create problems in the family or uh, in their life sooner. When somebody doesn't care about your feelings anymore that once used to, that really hurts. There are a lot of things there are a lot of things that that person does that is not themselves any that's just not them and you try to not take it personally and um but you can't help it sometimes it is hurtful there's no doubt and again you're going to get a lot of advice just don't let it bother you it's easier said than done but when somebody mistreats you or is cruel to you or doesn't give a shit about you for the next couple hours the best you can do as their caregiver is step away, take a day off, take a couple days off if you know they're gonna be safe and all right, get some respite care in there. Have somebody just pop in and make sure they're okay and hand in their medication. There's ways to go around it, but don't let your mental health deteriorate because you're giving everything to another person and you don't get anything back or you don't get a lot back. You're certainly not maybe gonna get a lot of love back. My mom does say thank you to me. That's fairly new. She does um, tell me she appreciates me. She um, asks almost every day that I'm there, when am I gonna get better? That's really tough. What do you say? Well, I say what I say. I don't, um, I don't have a script on that. Each time she asks it, it's a little bit of a different situation, but um, Am I going to get better? In what way, Mom? You're not going to be 25 again. You know, I say things like that to her. Um, well, no, because you're not going backwards. You're going forwards. I can't walk very well either like I used to. Um, our joints, it's normal for your joints to hurt, Mom. You're getting older. Well, it's because you're older, Mom. But you're still, you still got it together. Look how fast you are at playing cards. Am I going to get stronger? I'm so weak all the time. Yes, every day is different. You're going to get stronger. Is she going to get stronger? Probably not. Um, so just... I'm not saying be a big fat liar, but I am saying give your person hope. Who knows, tomorrow you might feel stronger. After, I, after you eat this thing I'm making for you, it might make you feel stronger. Oh, and for those of you out there who's saying give her Insure, give her Boost, give her Kate Farms, she won't drink it. That's it, she won't drink it. Absolutely refuses to drink it. I can barely get her to take vitamins, even if they're cherry flavored chewables. Um, she won't do it. There's a lot she will not do. So you've got a way out. Is it really worth it to me to fight with somebody who might not be around next year for Mother's Day? So I'm going to do my best to be a really good caregiver to her. How to reduce the risk of dementia. So a lot of these uh, experts, neurologists, cardiologists, GI doctors, they say a lot of the same things. So I'm gonna to read to you exactly what they say. How to reduce the risk of dementia. Limit alcohol, stop smoking, get your hearing aids. If, hearing, if your hearing is affected, there's a direct correlation between I can't hear and I spend years of not hearing and dementia. Uh, my mom refuses to wear the hearing aids. 
exercise, even if you're just sitting in your chair, or get physical therapy to show you a few things and do it with your loved one. Stay social. It can mean, it, we're not talking like, let's go out to the bar or um, let's go gamble all night long. Book club, walk with a friend. Our walking consists of walking out the door and going to the mailbox and coming back. Um, and then we do it again, because she forgot she just did it. And then we do it again. Uh, playing cards, going on outings. Outing can be, let's get in the car and just look at the Christmas lights. Keep your blood pressure in check. Keep your blood sugar in check. Take your medications as prescribed for your cholesterol, for your diabetes, um, for your high blood pressure. Eat a healthy diet to the best of your ability. There are programs out there uh, for elderly people. And um, I could talk about that too another time. I, I didn't know there were the programs out there that there are. Uh, there's a lot of them. Every state is different. Every county is different. Sleep and stay mentally well. Some people, dementia, depending on the type that they have, don't sleep well at all. Or they have different uh, things they're hearing or things that wake them up. Um, we go through periods of that and then it settles down. And sleeping now is about, you know, 15, 18 hours out of 24. Uh, stay mentally well to the best of your ability. Uh, if you're younger, you don't want, I'm trying, uh, me, I'm trying to do all these things because some of it is genetic. Do, I don't want this. I'm doing everything I can. I also play Scrabble on my tablet every night. Is that helping? I don't know. That was another topic that I was going to go over and it had to do with, do all of these mental gymnastics and brain games really work? So again, it's kind of controversial, but I'm doing them. I do that every night and there's lots of other different games you can do and play and, um, I'm not a big social person, but I try to still get out and socialize, even if it's just for a conversation. Good. Oh, if I didn't already say, can dementia be cured? No. Okay, can Alzheimer, can all this be cured? No, it can't. Does medication work? I don't think so. My mom's been off and on medication, sorry about this side note, for a very long time. All the different ones that came out, all she had were terrible side effects, nightmares. Uh, GI problems we got enough of that we don't need to add to it and how do you measure it how do you measure that that is really helping a year later or two years later is she remembering less or more how do you measure um, but it, read up on it do your own research if you feel like you at least have to do something or give your loved one something fine uh, for us there's not enough evidence that any of them work the bottom line that I wanted to say to you is uh, don't let other people persuade you too much into doing what you know doesn't work for your loved one. So like for my mother, putting up posters and papers and taping things to the wall and taping things shut like we do. Um, the next day you come over, all that those papers are gone and things that you tape shut are open. Um, so in my case, that doesn't work. But then any new caregiver we used to have that helped part time would come over and that would be the big magical try putting things on the wall but well, we've tried that we'll try it again you should try it again um, and I used to do all these um, gyrations to please other people I would do all their suggestions to prove to them that these suggestions don't work what a waste of energy why was I doing that I know that those things don't work I know that my mom's purse for example shouldn't be down by her feet because she's going to trip on her purse I, I know that you know putting her clothing in a certain uh, pile folded in a certain place is better than hanging things up because hanging them up she can't find any of it but somebody's gonna say why you ha you know what you should hang it all up you shouldn't put it all out here so I would do those things just to please these other people don't do that shit don't do you know best you know your loved one best don't let other people bully you into trying and doing things that you know isn't going to work. You know your person best. You know your loved one better than the doctors. You know what's going to work. Those social workers have all kinds of suggestions because it's, it's just a blanket. It's a blanket of suggestions. I'm sure one of these might work for you. Um, but, so just find what works for you. We all get through this together. I think I've posted probably, I don't know, three or four other videos about being a caregiver. Um, you're not alone. I don't get a lot of feedback on these, but I sure would like to find some other caregivers out there because we all are in this together and it's not an easy road. It's kind of lonely, actually. You're on your own every day with somebody that's not even going to remember that you were there or you at all. It's really an interesting thing to experience. It's all about them. It's not about you when you're a caregiver. You've given up your independence as a caregiver. It's 100% to help that person and it's a selfless, extremely difficult job. 
I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.